Welcome back to Station Ears, and just as the sun sets on Mars, we're going to start by grabbing this, I think, the air scrubber. Hopefully it won't eject me off into the atmosphere. And head around here, I'm going to put it up onto our, up top of our tank connector, like that. <laughs> Not like that. Uh, where's a grab handle? Um, there you are. Try again. <laughs> okay, there we go. And we're going to swap our mining belt out. Let's just change the light. Swap a mining belt out with the tool belt. And we're going to screw that down using the spanner or the wrench. And I think in one of our other boxes, probably down here, we've got a water filter. Yeah. So hopefully this will eject the water into the base or <laughs> the tiny, tiny base. Let's pop it in there. And of course that's connected to this pipe network, or a very, very short network anyway. So there's a pipe going to the inside and that is going to work hopefully. Um, <clears throat> however, in here, I'm going to say a lot, and I did get a comment from the last episode with people saying, hey, you can just use your active vent and that's uh, to, to pressurize things. And that's absolutely correct, you can. Uh, you'll get it happening anyway, but uh, if you just pop in here, in fact, I don't even need the data disk, but uh, I'll pop it in anyway. And if we just grab um, you and replace it, it's the quickest way to do this. <clears throat> we can turn that vent on and set outward in this case. Oh, well, uh, it's inward, but it's labeled then to set, set outward. Yeah. And you'll see atmosphere is heading in. <laughs> so we are pressurizing. So no other mechanism than <clears throat> pulling in atmosphere in this block and everything else out here is being pulled in as well. Now you don't want to over pressurize using this method, but this will get you up to a working temp or working pressure at least. And then of course we've got to figure out a working temperature. So we don't want to increase this too much because as soon as we start increasing the temperature, the pressure will rise. So yeah, um, that seems about enough to start with. And uh, let's just turn that off again. And then we'll just add this active vent back to the airlock config. Okay, so then let's cycle to the interior. And we're going to cancel the pressurization. So in here, it's already uh, 16, 17 kPa. And of course, as soon as I heat this place up, it's going to get higher. So. This is a pretty good way of getting started on Mars, I think. Uh, you've got uh, just a really an active vent pressurizing this, coming to this passive vent on the inside. Similarly, we can drag our portable air conditioner in here and we're gonna leave it to hot, which is why it says set cold at the moment. And we can turn that on. It's gonna take up a lot of battery power, but it will start heating up in here. And we can do that as an alternative to the rather crude way of just pulling out the uh, welding torch and uh, burning gas. So yeah, this is pretty good. And it should get us to a working temperature, of course. I don't really have much power, so I think the next thing is for me to add some solar panels. Then you know how to do that already, so I'm probably not gonna do that on camera. But uh, I'm not gonna leave this alone in here because uh, I don't wanna come back on this to be um, far too hot. And do also then need to deal with cooling. Now cooling, we've got these two passive vents and we've got spaces below them for me to put a valve in. So, did I bring the valves in? No, I didn't. Um, we should be alright to leave this in here temporary. Oh. This this just isn't big enough to do this properly, but let's just pop you, just push, push. Yeah, that should do, I think. We should be able to get past. And minus 45, okay, let's leave that alone. That's a small battery, so it shouldn't take us too long. There we go. Of course, we do have to remember that we're going to introduce new gas to the whole thing whenever we do that. So, you know, we've got to be a bit careful. So, yeah, here's our one solar panel. And behind here is our pipe network. We're going to have to make some steel to make some radiators, but light is getting out. Power at... low. Ugh, power low. Going to have to wait for sunrise. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> wait for sunrise. Okay, so I've installed those couple of valves that we get to start with. Uh, I shouldn't need more than... In fact, I do need one, more than one. 
If I want to shut off that entire outside section with two passive valves, two passive vents, even I can't shut, sh can't shut that extra section outside off from us entirely. So I'm going to put two vents in, uh, two valves in, just to keep that to keep that separate if I need to. Uh, not that I should need to too much. Anyway, um, this is still going, but that battery is not going to last for very long. But it's got us from minus 55 to minus 30, and it's sunrise. So let's head outside and just look at the, um, the, the atmospheric analyzer. Our pressure is rising. We're above 17 now. It's at about 16 point something. And of course, uh, we've gone up a couple of, uh, well, about 20 degrees, 25 degrees. So yeah, it might push us over into 18 or 19, and then we'll do a bit more pressurization, etc to get us to uh, somewhere where we could grow crops, I guess. We've got CO2, we've got a tiny bit of O2, we've got plenty of N2, which is just bulking up the atmosphere, which is good, and uh, almost no X, uh, you know, the pollutant, which is good as well. And unfortunately, no matter where I look in the atmosphere as well, the atmosphere appears to be exactly the same everywhere, so we're not gonna be able to pull water in using this, unfortunately. We can, of course, simply put a different filter in to, again, Pressurize, I guess, if we put passive vent on the inside, but for now, I'll leave this as is. I'll probably replace this with a tank and then we'll just get water on the inside once I get some ice or something along those lines. Uh, yeah, we'll have to uh, pull that in. Yeah, that's fine for now. I've moved around, I've crafted some more solar panels. I think what I'm going to do just to be lazy, <laughs> at least so I don't have to keep doing things until we've got a controller up, is just tilt these um, like this. And then something like actually downwards. Yeah, the idea. So each of them is at a different angle. It's very wasteful of resources, but it does mean I don't have to actually do anything. Uh, so 10, 30, 50, uh, 70, and then, you know, 100 probably on the other end. That'll Tell us stop me having to do much once I get enough cable coil, of course, to do that. The reason why I don't have a lot of cable coil is just because I run out of resources making the solar panels. <laughs> uh, but I did, uh, however, make a furnace, so we're going to need that to make, um, as usual, whoops, uh, steel. And I think I'm not really going to do much with the resources to start with, so I don't need to put those... Yeah, let's just rotate it this way, uh, just so that I can put pipes out to passive vents if I need them. There we go. So, our regular furnace, and we can pop stuff into the top, at the bottom, once we create some steel, and then hopefully, you know, we'll have stuff at the back. Okay, I think there's a bit of a bug in here. The temperature's continuing to rise, unless it's this road flare. The only thing I think of is it is the road flare, because uh, there's no nothing else that should be producing a temperature rise in there. It's night time. There's nothing coming in. Uh, these pipes aren't feeding anywhere yet, and the temperature is still rising. Um, yeah, so I'm not quite sure, I'm quite sure what could be causing that. We're getting to usable temperatures, but... And this thing is off, and there is no battery, unless there's some kind of bug with that. Uh, not quite so sure, so I think I'm going to have to work on uh, getting an output to this to be able to get rid of some of the heat. Um, let's uh, just close this off and I will head to the exterior. And let's see if it's these infinite row flares that just... <laughs> they don't seem to stop. Um, so let's just pop them out here. And see if it's these. There we go. And if we pop back inside, how bad is it? Uh, let's cancel the depressurize. It'll try and pressurize us up to too well, too high otherwise. So 19.5, 19.6. Alright, that's it's dark. Let's turn my light on. Interesting. So it was the road flares, which I guess shouldn't be a bug. Um, so if you do want to heat up your base for free. Oh, wait, it's rising. Mm. But it's not rising like it was before. So, OK, if you want a free source of heat, use your road flares. I guess you don't even need to use a portable air conditioner unless you want to cool things, which um, is pretty cool. All right, onward.
Okay, so with our furnace set up, I crafted some steel, the usual recipe, which is 3 to 1 iron to coal. So I've got 30 iron and 10 coal in. And again, 3 to 1, just to start off with. So three, literally 3 volatile and 1 oxide. Don't put any more than that in it. Hit the activate button and away you go, you get steel. So put those in the hydraulic pipe bender. And in there, uh, we can now build pipe radiators. It does take some gold, but I've got some gold fairly close by, so we can afford a, a few of these. I'm just going to do, I don't know, three, I think. Start off with three and see how good they are at getting rid of the heat. Uh, two and three. There we go. Okay, and we'll also get a control set up for those solar panels fairly soon. Don't worry, I won't leave them like this. It just means I keep have to I can run around and not have to worry about them too much. So pipe radiators uh, is uh, doesn't matter which way they face, I guess. But uh, I think I want them facing outward with this crazy rotation system. There we go. Okay, so we've got three. And let's see if that actually equalizes. Um, what we may have to do, I don't know whether it's actually gonna model heat rising or whether these are gonna need to be up here. Don't know, but I can always remodel if I need to. Let's head inside, cycle to the interior. Hopefully it's not continued to heat in here. Let's have a look. Okay, it has continued to heat in here. Maybe that's just from sunlight. It's a possibility. Although it should also radiate back to through these panels to the atmosphere, even though it's a smaller atmosphere. But, okay, let's see if we can open these and let's see if that will actually... That's certainly going to fill the pipes, so that should reduce the pressure a little bit. Okay, but will it reduce the heat? We can obviously pump stuff out through one into the other. That, that is easy enough to do if we need power. <laughs> it's just getting hotter. <laughs> okay, so maybe I should pump the uh, air through those those radiators and maybe that will cool things off. So I'm going to leave things uh, open as far as these valves are concerned at the moment. Oh, while it continues to heat in there, no idea why. Uh, well, at least, unless it is sunlight. In which case, Let's go and see if we can put it through the radiators and get rid of some of that heat. So we're going to need a pump for that. Let's have a look. Um, do we have a... I don't want a volume pump. Hmm. I don't think it should matter because it just should just circulate. So let's just build one of these anyway. We're going to use it regardless, so we may as well. And then we will need to connect it up to the power, of course. So I am going to want to put it, put it here. I think I need to swap belts. I do. I'm on the mining belt. Let's just go and remove one of these pipe sections. Um, nope. Nope. There we go. And let's put a pump in place. Uh, I think I'm going to rotate that so the pump is pointing so that the output's along the ground level, there or thereabouts. Is that right? I think it is. Hopefully it's at the right level. Let's uh, give this a go. And let's just connect some cable up. Do we have anything that will go back this way? Yeah, we can sort of do. I mean, to uh, create more of... In fact, these have to go around one more, don't they? Because this thing is a little bit larger than it looks as far as the collision is concerned. Yeah, so we are going to need a few more segments. That's okay. I think I've got, I've got enough copper. Let me just turn this off. It's making a noise. And you? Do we have enough cable coil? Let's have a look. Um, construction kit sensors. Let's go back through this cable coil. I don't have any copper. Where's the copper? It's got to be one of these. It's in our auto lathe. Let's just pull the contents of that. 
and here we go. This will of course produce cable coil really quite quickly, so <laughs> we don't have to worry too much. Oh, that's coal. Not sure what coal's doing down there. Let's put it up here. And a couple more pieces, something like that, just to be safe. Okay. And that battery is full. That's all working just fine. We'll go straight pieces, I think. And last piece. Yeah, it looks like it. Okay, so we should have power to our volume pump now. Let's just climb on top for a second if we can. Oh, I may need to put another iron frame or two down out here. In fact, let's do that. Where's my iron frames? Let's put... don't want them there necessarily, but uh, let's just fill in these blocks. And swap with that. Get out our welder and uh, just complete these. Yeah, burning a cable while I'm at it. <laughs> Be careful with the welder. <laughs> uh, let's just get rid of these. Grab these and our cutters just to cut that section of cable out. All right, whoops. Okay, so can we just say, do that. And let's just increase this. It shouldn't really matter what we set this to. Um, we're just really telling it to pump stuff through, cycle to interior. Okay, so we can see the atmosphere is is working. Now, is it cooling by virtue of going through that system? It does look like it. 22.7, 22.6. Okay, and because this is the input, I can probably get rid of... Uh, no, I want to keep both valves. So this is the input, so if I want to stop this from happening, I can shut off the valve there, shut off the valve here, and hopefully the atmosphere should settle. Yeah, there it goes. And the temperature should go back to its previous behavior, which is mysteriously rising, probably due to sunlight and lack of radiation. Um, yep, yeah, there we go. So I think what we'll probably need to do is get some kind of temperature sensing in this and just, um, you know, turn or, or to replace these with digital valves or a digital valve. Yeah, and um, turn them both on when the temperature rises too much. So that'll keep us cool. And of course, I'll probably do that next episode. And on the other side, the heat. Well, we are gaining heat no matter what we do at the moment. But I guess we should have some kind of way of heating regardless that isn't this portable air conditioner. It's okay, but it's, it's huge. And I can probably fit something on a wall somewhere without too much more effort. Uh, so let's just cycle to the outside. Let's see if we can make a... Uh, a wall heater. Here we go. Ah, oh, it's night time again. Okay, we got uh, that going. I guess we can turn off our pump now. We don't actually need it at the, at the moment. We're probably going to control that or a different kind of pump once we have a, a full electronic loop system in there. But for now, you know, we can control it manually, much like anything else that we build. Uh, let's pop up here. And what do we need? Did I say we need a wall heater? Is it in here? It might be. And even though it's actually doesn't require any pipe connection, it's still made with a, with a pipe bender, which is annoying, but uh, that's okay. Wall heater, there we go. And we've got enough to make one, so we'll just put it on build. One done. So we'll put that inside. I'll still that in my backpack for now. And I'm just going to make more cable coils, I think. So let's turn you back on and go back to cable coils. Should be in here somewhere. Yeah. We're going to need quite a few, of course. And I'll probably run those out through one of these blocks. 
We may have to depressurize, but that's no big deal because we can repressurize just with the airlock again. Or potentially just run in through here, something like that, and up onto a wall. Hmm. We may need to put a block in somewhere for that to actually work. Oh, lots of cable coil. Okay, so let me just see if I can find a good place to put it. And I'm sorry to say, I think this portable scrubber is bust, at least in uh, in a world atmosphere at the moment. Um, this should... Uh, if I put a filter in the back, let's say... Uh, is that an O2 filter? Um, let's just put that away. Oxygen, yeah. So, air scrubbers basically take in atmosphere. And whatever is in this filter at the back, they, uh, they contain it inside an internal tank. But right now, it's on and there's nothing going in there. Despite the fact we do have O2 out here. So I don't think we can use this to get anything out of base. That's why I was wondering why we didn't get anything earlier. I did switch from water because there's no water out here, so I obviously can't do that. Um, I switched to pure CO2 and then N2 and then O2 just to see if anything <clears throat> could be brought in from this atmosphere. Looks like it can't, so this is gonna have to le be left alone. Which I suppose is okay in a way, and I don't have to spend batteries on it. It doesn't mean, however, I am gonna have to get another way of getting O2 for our typical, um, you know, uh, <laughs> refilling of our air tank. Now we can go with the, I guess, the active vent approach. So I could put an active vent into um, a machine that will scrub that out. That's the atmospherics machines. Hopefully, <laughs> uh, but we can do that by the, the very straightforward methods. I think we used the very start of, well, hopefully we can do this, at the very start of um, the moon or vacuum playthrough, which is just to put a gas tank storage down, connect it to an active vent, drop some oxides over the top and have the active vent, put it all into the gas tank storage. And then, um, you know, we've pretty much got what we want there. So that, that is one possible option. Um, do I have an active vent? I don't think I have one around. Which machine is actually in? It's probably going to be in the hydraulic, isn't it? Because uh, it is a thing that should be in there. We've got obviously our hydroponics left to go, but we need to get some water for that. Um, let's just, are you in here? Ah, there you go, active vent. Yeah, so we can make one of those and just a piece of pipe. It's going to need powering, but that's not a problem either. And we also have enough materials around that I can get my default solar controller, which is the, the really small one where you have two IO electronics, one memory electronics and a batch right. Uh, yeah, sorry, no, hang on. Yeah, one processor, two IO and a batch right. Um, memory unit yeah i'll say that correct <laughs> okay two io one processor one memory unit and all you do is basically add 1.8 into the memory unit divide the solar angle from a sensor by that and then write it out and you need a reader to actually read from the solar sensor so yeah just two of the io units but i'll do that off camera you've seen that in the previous playthrough this is a very cheap way of getting some cheap solar solar um controlling going all right, so what's next? Uh-oh, we can do this. And we can do this because we have an atmosphere. So if I tell this to pull in, it's going to fill this canister pretty well. It's just going to do it with CO2 and N2. And most importantly, not oxygen. So I think I'm going to have to go via the furnace method rather than the active vent. Um, and we'll have to put a, maybe a pump but certainly a furnace, and we should be able to then fill that. Let's just turn you off there now. Uh, we should be able to fill that from the furnace by putting oxides in there or something along those lines. Yeah, um, wow. Okay, let's get that going. Okay, and there we go. To start off with, we've got pressure 1.585 MPA, or 1800 KPA, whichever one you want to, to say. And we just put some oxides in the top, around 38 of them. And this is all we get. Uh, disconstructed, this reconstructed it. The yeah, there's the internal temperature. So uh, sorry, and pressure. So we can refill things. 
what I may or what I probably should do is extend this out a little bit and again put a pump in place so to pump everything out of the furnace into the tank. Uh, that doesn't mean we have to uh, get some um, oxides to uh, really breathe, at least to start off with, which is no big deal. There's plenty around. We don't have much of a problem there. So 90% O2, 10% N2, and we should be able to breathe that. And as the sun rises on a new day, I did actually put that wall heater in place right there. Uh, and a power cord coming out this way. So we're going to run the power cord down and around. We can move that active vent now. So we should have a way of heating. Uh, we have a way of pressurizing using the airlock or otherwise. We can do it with a volume pump now. There's, there's no real difference as far as that's concerned. We just need a, if you wanted to do it with a volume pump, just put a passive vent on the outside, volume pump, and then just pump everything inside. Something along those lines will do just fine. Uh, we've got two passive vents with a volume pump that will cool the air, which is also very good. And our, well, air is currently CO2, mostly, which should be okay for the plants, but the next big challenge is water. Now, if this, I mean, it's still minus 55 degrees out here, I wouldn't have expected the ice to sublimate uh, or even melt in an atmosphere, but maybe it has. Maybe it's only found underground. I still haven't seen any ice, which is a real problem for water. Yeah, so let me think, let me know in the comments if you've tried this, if you've found water anywhere, if I am just being really unlucky. Um, that would be very useful, yeah. So I think that should do it for this episode. We've got uh, a better home base. We've got steel manufacturing on the go, even if it's only a tiny version. We've got our major machines up and running. And uh, we've got a nice atmosphere in there that we can keep at the correct temperature and pressure, just not the right, correct contents yet. So, hope we'll join the next episode. We'll probably continue this then and hopefully get things going. Now, of course, we don't have to worry too much about oxygen to start with. I have set this up because just in case I lose this tank, uh, this, you start with this. So you can put a, a canister into the top of it right there and it will let you refill from that tank. However, um, I lost mine in the previous playthrough. <laughs> I think it exploded or something along those lines. So, um, yeah, I, I want this kind of setup as soon as possible just to make sure we never run out of air. So we've got an environment, we've got air, we just need food, I guess. And that's the next challenge, which is water. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. As normal, feel free to subscribe, share, and thumbs up if you uh, want to. Otherwise, leave a comment, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.